Hey guys, I'd like to present you the second iteration of my stylized hair editing tool. In this video, I'll go over the new features and updates, and I'm gonna show you how you can use them to create interesting hairstyles for your characters. There's uh, quite a few new features, so I'll try to show all of them, and hopefully I'll make it clear how to use them. I've worked for quite some time on it, so I hope you like it. Let me show you what's new. First of all, you may notice the new layout. I've rearranged it a little bit, and the section toggles now have these stars around them uh, to have them uh, even more distinguishable from the other settings. To see the settings beneath them, we need to use the show height script that is uh, inside the folder that you've downloaded. It's a new one specific for version 2, so make sure you only use it with this version. If I now select one of these check marks and uh, run the script, it will reveal the settings. There are no changes to the shape, uh, so let's move to the twist. This is the strand rotations, now called twists, because uh, that's uh, what they kind of are. Uh, but I've put them under one section uh, to have it even more organized. To see them, you can check these and uh, run the script again, and you can review as many as you need. Then you can uncheck the main twist toggle to hide them all. Make sure you run the script every time. Other than that, uh, no changes here. The first major change is with the strand bumps. First of all, we can increase the strength value, and you see them appear. Then we can define how many of them we want on our hair strand. This is what I used to create these ponytails uh, to the intro character. Now these uh, have like a wavy onion shape, but I've added a few other shapes, for example, bubbles. With this, uh, we can create these really cute uh, bubbly ponytails. And then you will play with the shape settings to adjust the shape of these. There is also this rhombic pattern. This could be used to create something uh, very stylized or low poly. That's up to you. We can adjust the gaps between the bumps with this uh, gap size setting. Now, if we want some ties in here, we can use this uh, Ornaments in Gaps checkbox. You see something appears. Uh, we'll take a look at this with more detail later on. There's also random bump settings, so if you wish to add some uh, irregular bumpiness, you can use these. Alright, moving on. Curls and braids have uh, no new settings, so we'll skip them. Profiles have a new waviness setting. This you can use to twist around any pattern from the profile. Mm, it looks better with higher curve resolutions, so play around. Also, I've spent some time to optimize the generated profile curves, so that the hair strands maintain a somewhat consistent thickness uh, between the different types of profiles. There's also a smart bevel that appears on sharp corners, uh, so that the weird shading artifacts from the smooth shading are reduced when you have a sharp profile. These though disappear when UV unwrapping is on, uh, so that the bevel doesn't distort the UV map and create really tiny UV islands. Now, here's the brand new stuff. Ornaments. If you want to have some object in our hair strand, 
and have it move with the hair curve when grooming or deforming, uh, we can use these settings. First, if we enable ornaments, now we have this uh, movable object that we can position along the curve. And you see it's deforming the hair. Uh, that's this uh, pinch option. We can also control the pinch tightness and the width. Now this object here is just a simple hairband or tie. It's very simple geometry, but if you just want some simple tie, it will do the job. With these three settings, we can adjust the size, shape, rotation. Now, you would generally use some custom object that you've modeled, uh, but I've provided a few more adjustable ties, like this coil, and a scrunchy looking thing. You can definitely use these for some quick style. To use a custom object, select it from this field and check Use Custom Object. You can set a material for the ornament object from this field. Another useful thing we can do with this is to make uh, hair endings. I've modeled this uh, tied off hair end and if I use it as the ornament object, I can position it at the end and now this will follow when I groom the hair strand. And this is the ornament object that we can instance on our hair bumps. If I disable this, go back to the bumps section, let's make some, then check on ornaments and gaps, and here we go. Then we can adjust it from the scale and rotate settings, as well as the gap size from here. And you can change it to any object you want. And now the other big addition, hair dynamics. Now you can have reactive hair animations without doing any additional setup. Here's how to use it. Select the strand that you want to animate and check on enable dynamics. Now one thing that is important to do is, in order for this to work, I will have to remove the parenting from the hair. By default, when you add these strands, they are parented to the base mesh so that when you move it, the hairs come along. But the simulation will not work if that's the case, so remove the parent with Alt P and clear parent. Then let's select a follow object for our simulation. Most often this will be our base mesh. You can choose any other, but it's most logical to be the base mesh because we want the hair to follow our head. And now if I play the animation and move the base mesh, we have this going on. Then we'll just parent the base mesh to our regular body or rig if it's not already. So that when our character moves, the hair will react to the movement. Awesome, now here are some of the settings for the hair. Gravity strength, basically how much gravity will pull the hair strand down. And you can set it individually for each hair strand so you have that control, or as we'll see later, you can set a global value for all strands from the node tree. The strand stiffness is uh, how much the hair resists any forces. Low values will make like a very loose rope-like hair, kind of. And higher values will make this uh, springy hair strand. Speaking of springiness, Damping will determine how much the hair will oscillate when moving. You can have a very jittery strand or a very dampened one, kind of like it's underwater. Effect position uh, basically mutes the hair dynamics from the root up, so you can have only the tips waving around. That would be useful if the hair is tight or you simply don't want any movement here. So that's that. Now obviously we don't want our hairs to clip through the body, 
so there's a few collision options. First, we're gonna need a collider object. You can use the body, but the denser the mesh is, the heavier the calculations are, so we'll get a very laggy performance. You really need as low poly collider mesh as you can. Here I smooshed a heavily decimated mesh around the head and the jacket and arms, basically where any collisions might happen, and this is parented to the rig, so it moves with the character. You can do this in various ways. Uh, you can duplicate the geometry. Join it with Ctrl J and use a remesh and decimate modifiers to make it as uh, low poly as you can while still capturing the overall shape. That would be the easiest way, but you can also go about by modeling it or sculpting it, whatever you wish. Then we select it as a collider object from the modifier, choose some uh, offset distance and enable collisions. We can see this best here with the Suzanne demo. The monkey head is quite dense, but if I enable the collider, it's way less polygons, but still captures the shape. So it looks like it's colliding with the main head. Now you see it clipping here. To have more accurate collisions, we can up these quality steps here. The more the better, but it will be slower. So there's a trade-off between accuracy and performance. You have to tweak it and see what works the best. If I increase this to 10, you can see much more accurate, but a bit slower. And when you have uh, more hairs, it will lag even more. So if you just want to prevent some clipping, having fewer steps will be a lot faster. Now if I disable the dynamics, you can see the hair move somewhere. We can reparent it to the mesh with this uh, parent to follow object. And now it will move uh, with the mesh like before, with the only difference that if I edit it, it's in the original position. This only moves the generated geometry from the modifier, not the object itself. So if I edit here, you see it's the same thing just over there. So we must edit our hair in the original rest position of our character. So that's how you can use the dynamics to have some hair animation. As for UVs, there are no changes. I've just returned the old uh, simple UV coordinates. I don't know why I removed them to begin with, but if all you want is to shade within Blender and don't really need a proper UV map, this will do a fine job. To use them in the shader, add an attribute node and it's called Hair UV Simple. You can see the name under internal dependencies here in the modifier. And the benefit is, it's uh, way faster than UV unwrapping for real-time shading. And by the way, if you're working with this and it's really laggy, check if some uh, hair strands have the UV unwrap turned on and uncheck it while editing. If you look inside the node tree, you see this uh, red panel. This is where you can set global values for various settings that will apply to every hair strand that has this node tree applied to. For instance, we can set a global material. Instead of doing it one by one, select a material and check set global. And now all of these will have the same material. You can do this with the various settings for the hair dynamics, parenting. Now, this right here is the Blender default scale the size of the default cube. But that's actually quite big, uh, you can see the head is almost 2 meters tall. But if you're working in realistic scale, it could be very annoying to import really small values here, and sliders will have a big changes in effect. 
So that's why I added this orange field setting scale factor. This value will scale the settings of the modifier so that they will be more tailored to small scales. If you put 0.2 here, it will be very close to realistic scale. And if you're working on something very big for some reason, scale this up and it will do the job. And finally, there are a few settings here at the end. Flat shading. If you're doing something uh, low poly, uh, you may not want smooth shading. Subdivide curve. Uh, this will subdivide the initial hair curve that you've put in the beginning. Note that this is different than curve resolution. This only smooths the original hair curve. And subdivide geometry. This will add a subdivision surface level to the final outcome of the modifier if you want extra smoothness. So that pretty much covers all the new features. I hope this is very useful and you'll be able to create awesome hairstyles with it. Alright, have a great day and see you soon.